you watch, took it easy. Got a telly. Oh, it's a beautiful morning, isn't yeah, it? You want to bring up those bones there? They look really nice. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Take Dara this afternoon. Give Sharon a wee break. Oh, I'd be lovely to see wee Dara. What time? She'll drop him a brown through your phone. Dolly, you all set? Hi. Hello. 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 Okay. Bye. Have a good day. Hi, okay. Come on, so Sarah, let's go. One. Oh, no, she's busy with the wine. Maybe we could look at your sister's car today. <laughs> I think one of the better things to be at. Bye, everybody. See, see you later. Daddy. Going later. Head down to Sally's, maybe. Let's go to the front bar. Good fun. Oh, what? Place is pumping, mate. Uh huh. So, where do we start in this thing? She said she was having trouble with overheating yesterday. She needs to get a new one. Ah, she doesn't look at that word you say, though. Oh. It's not moving, Dad. What? It's not moving. Here, try this first one. Oh, that'll do the rest of the bigger enough. No. No better, I suppose, no. There you go. I'll oh, give us that in there. <laughs> Where did you get that, Dad? In the old two books. <laughs> Here's another one. There's a wee hole in the pipe here, look. See it there? Oh, I'll see it, eh? A wee bit of well and sort that out, sir. Aye. Is that Mike? Oh, we were dead into town. 
What, no? No, Scrawn will tell him to wait, sir. Oh, you go on ahead, son. I can do this. You sure do? Ah, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's great, hey? Thanks. Will you bring up the welding equipment before you go, son? Yeah. Good. I'll see you later, Dad. See you later, son. See you, Mike. Oh, Aiden, if you get up to the house, will you bring some milk with you? I know, bar. Aiden? I'm just heading up the town to buy some jeans. Okay, love, see you later. Good match there. Oh, Aiden, uh, Kathy's meeting Donna in the salad bowl. If you see her, can you tell her not to forget about the vegetables? That's gone. I'll put some milk in the fridge there as well. Good lad. Right. Good on you. See you later. See you later. Oh, mummy, what size am I? 32. <laughs> now, you check the label, don't be getting the wrong ones. And Aiden, try them on. Call around the night, we did. This guy's planet. She was steaming last night, so it was. She's falling all over the place was right in front of him. Doing the pogo, can you believe that? There's no wonder you're stuck with it. You've been from there before, huh? Right. Can I get back in there and hurry and hurry? Grana, children, sit down there, bro, eh? All in, James, Sean, go together, look after the man. Okay, sit down there. Come on, come on. Obi, Oba, television newsroom. Bomb courthouse on the main street 30 minutes. I'm sorry can you speak more slowly which main street? Courthouse on the main street explosion in 30 minutes 500 pound bomb. Do you have a code word? Martha Pope. Malta? Martha. M-A-R-T-H-A-P-O-P-E. I-R-A. Oglig na heron.
we don't have a main street. Presumably they mean high street, but that's down from the courthouse, not up. Is she sure she took down the warning, right? He said on the main street. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you break past it, maybe? Yeah, I think they weren't a bit thin. Yeah. In your dreams, hey. Exactly, you say. Danielle O'Connor? Out of your league is what I'm saying. Oh, right. I have been there at the second time. I have been there. I have been there. I have been How long is this going to be? Then no matter, we just had the call. But I have to get a school uniform today. Well, I'd try it another day if I was you. No, you can't get through, thank you. Just move it on by. Thanks. Thank Sorry, there's a bomb warning. Uh, yeah, there's a bomb running up at the cold house, but you can still shop on Market Street. I'm just stopping the cars and go up here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please, there's an evacuation here. The warning said 200 yards up from the courthouse. We'll just make sure that if you're up... So it's up from the courthouse while you're sending us down? We're clearing up from the courthouse as well, and I'm just not prepared to take any risks. Clear everybody down to the bottom of Market Street. Anyone up the top of the hill, make sure that they're left down to the bottom of the street. That's it, down to the bottom of the street. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, bottom of the hill there, please, thank you. And you, sir, madam, thank you very much. Everyone move down to the bottom of the hill, thank you. Thanks a lot. Sorry, Elijah, you can't go up there. We just want to pop around the corner, just to... No, we need to clear you down to the bottom of the hill. What's going on? There's a security alert at the courthouse, so we need to get you to the bottom of the right. street. All right, okay. thanks, yeah. lads. Okay. Kathy's in the salad boat, hey. We're supposed to tell her to get stuff from Mommy. We'll head that way now, sure. I'm back. You can stop that, Mummy. I'll make some tea. Did you see Aidan? He was looking for you. No, I must have missed him. I left to be home. Can I just ask you to move down to the bottom of the street, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bottom of the street here, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Just keep it should be all right, like. No rush, moving there, walking down to the bottom of the hill. No, she said, well, you tried to buy your cup of tea anyway. You can get up and round on something. No need for alarms. Thank you very much. She's looking for you. It's really exciting. I'm going to have time for a sticky bun. Sticky bun, a cup of coffee. Thanks. Please help us! Daddy! Daddy, there's been a bomb in time. 
I came straight over. Dad, Kathy was down there. Christ. <laughs> Patsy! 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 Have you seen Kathy? She's here. It's not She's me, you didn't. Oh, He's not back yet. Michael, he hasn't rung. I don't know. People are injured. He'll be helped. Yeah, I know, but he would have phoned us by now. Look, I I'll go and find him. I'll go and find I'll him. I'll go and see him. Daddy. You stay with your mommy. Stay with your mommy. Stay with your mommy. Michael, no, mommy. Michael, right. Michael, no, mommy. Be grand. Mommy, honestly. Come on, let's go Sorry, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't miss him. Thank you for the area, sir. I, I know, but Aidan will be helping with the rescue. That'll be the kind of Sir, it's only official personnel allowed in. I, he would be official if he was helping. I have to find him and let me. My wife knows okay. You need to get to the hospital, sir. He might be helping there. Sorry, doctor. Sorry, doctor. I'm looking for my son, Aidan Gallagher. Aidan Gallagher. Gallagher. Uh, where would he we, be? we don't know all the names yet. Yeah, she's 36 years of age. Uh, she was working in a shop. Geraldine Preston. Aidan. 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 Aiden. Excuse me, excuse me. Mike. Mike. Your mommy and daddy, are they here, son? I don't know. Has somebody told them, son? I don't know. Don't worry, I'll phone them, OK? Yeah. Mike. Mike. Have you seen Aidan?
He was standing beside me. You mean he was standing beside you when the ball went off? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I don't know. Where's he now? Is he still in town? That's all I know. Oh. Okay, son, look. I'll phone your mommy and daddy, son, okay? You need to stay awake, son. You need to stay awake for them. That's it. That's it. Nurse, nurse, please, 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 please look after this boy, please. No, no, he's awake. He's in ward number two, third floor. No, I'm looking for him now. Well, he must be helping. deliberately misleading warnings about the location of the device. Shoppers That's were unwittingly moved out there. some stores Haven't you seen him? towards oh. the oh the bomb. Dozens of women and children were among the injured as the deafening explosion... People have been killed! I've seen there are hundreds of people alive. I've seen them myself. I've seen people helping! ...were among those killed, as were a Spanish school... There's no way he would have phoned us by now. Look, I don't know where he is, OK, but I'll go and find him. I'll go and find him, OK? Daddy, they're telling people not to go to the hospital. Go to the leisure centre. That's where, if someone's missing, that's where they're telling us to go. Kathy, don't let your mummy watch the TV, OK? Daddy, we need to know! Don't let your mummy watch the TV, Kathy! <laughs> Nurse, nurse. Like, can I'm I help looking, you? Yeah, I'm looking for me. I'm looking for me. Sorry. Where is she? Gallagher is not in the county of the Belfast list. Where is she? Not in Derry. That's 30 miles away. Are you sure he's not there? No. Nothing as yet, Mr. Gallagher. I'm what, so what, what sorry. You'll just have to wait. Can I I'm help you? I'm looking for Aaron Doctor. Is he eight years old? Jolene Marlowe, was she on the list? That's on the All right, here. Keep His name's James Barker. He was on a school trip. Michael? Your father. Mike? Stanley? This is uh, Michael Gallery. He's an old neighbour of mine. This is the Reverend Myers. Hello, Michael. We were neighbours up in Sawhill Park. It's Father Moore, Stanley McComb. Uh, haven't seen you in ages. Seven years, I huh? can't believe it. It's, uh... Is Anne with you? Uh, she went to work this morning in the shop. I haven't seen her. So they're talking about you. How about yourself? Well, um, I was working with Aidan on the car this morning and then he went into town to get some jeans. They uh, are saying it's the real IRA. I thought this was all supposed to be over now. Yeah. 
Is there anything I can get you, Michael? Uh, no, thanks, Father. I'm, I'm just, I just need to be on my own for a wee minute. See you later, Stella. Mr. Gallagher. Yeah. Please come through. Mr. Michael Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher, come in. Please, please sit down. I'm sure you know that there have been fatalities today. I know this is very painful for you, but what we need, Mr. Gallagher, is for you to tell us of any identifying features of your son.
I'm so sorry. Sweetheart. Sweetheart. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There are beautiful flowers on there. I've never seen as many flowers. I think it's such a lovely thing. Thanks, sweetheart. Has anybody seen Pat? Oh, always tricking about the cars. And, and have you seen Pat? I think she's in the kitchen. She went upstairs. And the girls? I think they were here a minute ago. I saw Cathy. Aye, Sharon was here. She got the gone far. We girls over there. Michael! <laughs> There's a fellow on the phone asking for photographs of him. No, I can't deal with that at the minute. Tell him to call back later. Is it a gentleman? Hi. Michael, there's someone here on the phone for me. What's the studio? I'll tell him to call in a minute, OK? I just want to find Patsy. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I get by you there, please? Patsy? She's, she's Sharon? And Aunt Rita's going to come with her. Daddy, help it, You'll be alright? Yeah. Okay. You sure? Yeah, we'll be fine. Right. See you, Mummy. Oh. Okay. See you, Daddy. Okay. You don't. Uh, uh, what are you going to do about college? It's not starting for a few weeks yet. Well, you don't have to make up your mind yet, do you? I was going. You'll be alright. What about me? Yeah, right? we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Sure? Now look after yourselves, okay? Okay. Find okay. yourself. Right. Bye. Safe driving. Are you sure you'll be up? Let me go. Yes. Okay. Safe home. Okay. Come on, leave that down. It's okay. I'm just going to tell you a few things. No, maybe. I'll do that. I'll do. You go on upstairs to bed. I'll be up in five minutes, okay?
Hello? Is that Michael Gallagher? Yes. What about this football match? Football match? Alex Ferguson. Roy Keane coming to play at Bennett National Homer. Surely you knew about that. No, no, I haven't heard. But do you know if there have been any charges yet? Have the police told you one of them about what they're doing? No, no, they haven't. Who is this, by the way? Lawrence Rush. Lawrence Rush? His wife owned the gift shop. My wife, Levy, owned the gift shop before they blew her up. Oh, yes, yes, I knew Libby. Hey, the point is, Michael, where's our voice in all this? I don't know. And I've called a meeting for all the families. The Royal Arms, Tuesday night. He's organized a meeting, he says. Maybe we should go, Michael, just to know what's going on. Great find disgusting and downright insulting. Insulting. The fact that they've reopened the streets. That's right, Laura. They've reopened the streets so shortly after the event. That's all for my daughter. And it was barely room for my family. Politicians at work. Trimble, Hume, McGinnis, for God's sake. I never invited any of them. I mean, I know, know you're saying that we're not entitled to compensation. It, it, it's, not, it's not about the money, mate. I, I don't care about the money. It, it's what they're saying. They're saying that he wasn't worth anything. My daughter has to strip to show her injuries for the compensation board. Show what they did to her. I can't believe people would make a young girl do that. This on the fund, they seem to be saying that, like, it's, a, it's almost like a Victorian means test. Michael. They're giving money out but what I want on our income. Is what the so RUC is saying? Can anyone tell me that? No, 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 please. Uh, what has this got to do with the RUC? I'll tell you what it's got to do with the RUC. Go ahead. 38 people have been arrested. And 38 people have been released. That's what it's got to do with the RUC. Yes, but most of those are south of the border. South of the border, that is the it's guard. That is not the RUC. Nobody's telling us anything. Nobody's yeah. telling us a thing. I, um, I've written to Tony Blair. <laughs> it's not worth the paper it's written on. Well, he is the Prime Minister, for God's sake. Thank you. That's the same story. As long as the bombs stay out of London, they don't give a damn, they don't care. It's always been that way, they're always well be. No, no, I'm sorry, Lawrence, I'm sorry, I, I can't. Please don't sit there and try and tell me that this is all somehow the fault of the British. Well, when, when are the Irish actually going to start taking responsibility for what happens in Ireland? What do you think this is all about? Money for bombs. Still going on. What's been done about that? Nothing. This is never what about the unionist community? If we want peace, we've got to find a peace that works. But what, has, has peace they ever put a, a bomb under a car? He doesn't have to. Every time he opens his mouth, he condemns the peace process. Don't stop. Don't What gives you the right to talk to people like this? Can you just say something? Please, can we all stop fighting each other? Lawrence, can I say something, Lawrence? Lawrence, can I say something, Lawrence? Lawrence, Lawrence, we're not going to get anywhere if all we do is shout at each other. Well said, Michael. Yes. We're not going to get anywhere. Go on, Michael. Go on. I'm, never, I'm not very good at public speaking, so you can do it. Look, I, I haven't put on the TV since the day we buried, buried our Aiden. So, I don't know what's happening. But I do know this, there's Catholics in this room, and, and Protestants, and Presbyterians, and Mormons, Marians here, and, and some of us believe in God, and, and now maybe some of us have no God. But I can tell you this, we're not going to get anywhere unless we do it together. That's the truth of the matter. Here, here. You're so right. Chairman does. 
hasn't a clue, have you, Maggie? Well, you just tell people when they can talk and when they can't talk. And maybe make a few phone calls every now and then. You can't manage to open your mouth at home. How are you going to cope with that, love? <laughs> Come on, it's okay for us to laugh. Well, I just think that it'd be good for us to be involved, maybe, you know? Right to me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Will we get some date? Yeah, where do we go? Chips. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, chips. Oh, mommy. Be possible to be put through to the person in charge of the inquiry, please? Yes, my name is Michael Gallagher. Is there anybody else in the office that I could speak to? I'm Michael Gallagher. My name is Michael Gallagher. I'm ringing on behalf of the OMA Self Help and Support Group. Where are the families of the victims of the bomb? the uh, OMA support group. We have a meeting with Chief Superintendent Anderson. Uh, if you just go through that way, there, please, sir. Chief Superintendent Eric Anderson. It's Mr. Gallagher, Michael Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher, please do come in. How are you doing, Stella? How do you do? Victor Bob. Nice girl, Elizabeth Gibson. Uh, obviously, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies to you all at this time. Now, I Please, if there's anything you need, anything at all. I presume you all have your own liaison officers by now. Mm. Now, we're still at the very early stages of a painstaking investigation. And as you can imagine, we're facing an enormous task. But my officers are working night and day. You can be assured of that. Now, Excuse me, would it be possible for me to ask a question, please? Yes, certainly, Mr. Gallagher. <clears throat> I think what we all want to know here is when will you be pressing charges against the men who did this? As I say, we're still at the very early stages of a very difficult inquiry. What I can say is we're making good progress. We're doing everything we can. Uh, we're trying to do our best. Do you know who did it? Obviously, we're all aware the real IRA has claimed responsibility. I mean the actual people. I know the organization. We're asking if you know their names. We have an idea of some of them. We're getting into a sensitive area here. Look, I want prosecutions as much as you do. But the problem is evidence. Hard information. Uh, we received your letter, but to be honest, sympathy is not enough. It's a great start, great, exactly. Um, whilst we understand um, the sensitive nature of the inquiry, things may be sensitive. Yes, but we need to know why there haven't been any charges. Yes, I Yeah, I know, but they can't have arrested them for no reason, can they? What about the police? Oh, well, they acknowledge that an explosion did occur and is the subject of an investigation. I mean, we've asked for a full briefing, but so far we're not getting very far. On the arrests, I mean, we already know that they've all been released. For Jesus' sake. The churches have been very good, and the local community groups. But it's not great. Very observant of you, Michael. Okay, look. We could sue them ourselves. 
The real IRA, the 32 County Sovereignty Committee, all of them. They exist, don't they? They have assets, money, money coming in from America. But we need evidence. And we'll get evidence. They did it with O.J. Simpson, okay? Uh, once he was acquitted, her family sued for damages and they got a verdict. That's the point. Christ, if every victim of the trouble started suing a paramilitary group, where would it end? Almost what I'm saying is, it's possible. Even if they prosecuted one of them, it would be a start. Look, if we did this, there's a chance we could put them out of business for good. He's got a point. How much would it cost us? A million, a million and a half. Oh, what are we going to fight that kind of money? We raise it, Stanley. We open a fund, start an appeal. Well, that'll take years. Years to even make a start. Somebody called. Says he knows who they are. What? What do you mean? Michael, what do you mean? We've got the names. Who was it? Who was it? He didn't say who he was. Thought it, eh? Okay, everybody, we'll be there in about five minutes. So we'll go to the front entrance. Let's be sure and keep together and retain our dignity, okay? They can get on with our peace process. Where's the rest of them? Uh, uh, Stanley, Stanley wouldn't come on principle. Godfrey and Ann Wilson. We should have spoken to the others at the very least, Lawrence. We didn't handle this right. We're going to upset the whole group. Are you coming or not? This way, gentlemen, please. He's in a room there, and he's going to face me. Wait here. 
Mr. Rush. That's me. Jerry Adams. Michael Gallagher. Thanks for coming. Shall we sit down? I want to make it clear at the outset that I'm not talking to you as a politician. When I tell you that this bombing was a dreadful and appalling atrocity. And my heart goes out to you all for the terrible loss that you're suffering. Obviously, we in Sinn Féin and the Republican community would like to do everything we possibly can to assist you. Mr. Adams, what we want to know is who is responsible. I don't know. I don't know who's responsible any more than you. What about the real IRA? Or the 32 county sovereignty movement? You must know them. Somebody in Sinn Féin must know something. Look, it's no consolation to you. But we have Mr. to do now. Do you know any of these names? There's 18 men walking free. Liam Campbell, Seamus Daly, Murphy. I don't know them. Would you tell us if you're dead? Look, I'm here to help if it's possible. These people are as much our enemies as they are yours. But you could ask your people to help the police. Rank and file Republicans are very wary about any cooperation with the REC. Well, then ask them to talk to the Garda. Get the information privately. Give it to me. I'll pass it on. I would still involve the REC at prosecution. You'll not accept it. Look, what we have got to do now is make sure that the peace process keeps moving forward. Put the past behind us. That's the only way we're going to deal with this. Mr. Adams, my brother was murdered by an IRA gunman in 1984. No witnesses came forward for that either. So they got away. So I agree with you. Let's put the past behind us. That was my brother then. But this is my son now. The war is supposed to be over. You say you want to build a new Northern Ireland, a peaceful Northern Ireland. But how can we build a peaceful Northern Ireland unless you help us to bring his killers to justice? I understand what you're saying, Mr. Gallagher. And my sympathies are with you. But assisting the RUC is only going to alienate hardliners in our community. The very people we have got to keep on board if we're to keep this thing moving forward. This is the reality we face. We cannot jeopardize the peace process. Well, now, they were pleased enough to come and be photographed at the funeral, but what are they actually doing now? I'm sorry, he's busy at the moment. Can I get him to call you back? No, no, look, the question to ask the British and Irish governments are these. Number one, how many officers have been assigned to the inquiry? And number two, has a witness protection plan been offered to the general public? Hello, Father, how are you doing? I don't know, this is very important now. The Gardaí haven't even appealed for witnesses on their website. I'm, so, I'm sorry? Yeah, I mean, the one thing that we're not getting here is the one thing that we all want. Those men answering to their crimes in a court of law. That's right. Yeah, but they're just not responding. And you know Victor Barker? He's English. He lost his son. Do you know what he does? He sends letters to the British Prime Minister, Tony Blair. And then he gets these personal replies saying, Dear Victor, best regards to the family, yours ever, Tony. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, I know that's great, isn't it? It's lovely. But, uh, but then he starts to ask questions and he wants meetings and everything like that there. And then he gets a reply from a secretary and then he gets a reply from an assistant to the secretary and then it goes to another department. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. He's busy at the moment. Can I take a message? Well, it would have finally get so angry, he, he, he sends a photograph of his son over to Tony Blair, blown up. It's a terrible, terrible picture. Absolutely. 
And do you know what they did, John? They lost it. I swear, I swear to God, they lost it. I mean, it's any wonder the families are so angry. Is it any wonder? I mean, all we're asking for here is that the government pay attention to the promises they make. But John, John, just, just hang on a second. I, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Patsy. Patsy. That was someone from the BBC. I know this is difficult. They're uh, doing a panorama programme and they want to talk to you about it. I know it's difficult with the phones going on. And um, the Belfast Telegraph rang and that, that interview's at four o'clock, okay? Four? It's at four. That's me. Oh, oh, Stanley. <clears throat> Stanley, I'm in, <clears throat> I'm in the middle of something now. I'll give you a call in five minutes, OK? Bye. I can't do this anymore. But we have to know what happened. I know what happened. I know what happened. Someone killed Aidan, that's what happened. And I don't care about why. Or what or how. Any of it. All I want to know is that he's at peace. That's it. That's all. Legacy is carnage. Carnage that was indiscriminate in every way. 29 men, women, children, and babies were killed. The bombers were former members of the provisional IRA who opposed their ceasefire. Liam Campbell lives in a comfortable house just a few yards inside the Irish Republic. According to intelligence sources, he's the so-called officer commanding the real IRA. There are two mobile phones whose records on the day of the bombing are of special interest. One of these two phones belonged to this man, Colin Murphy. He said he handed over both his mobile and his foreman's mobile to another builder. That builder was Seamus Daly. We spotted Colin Murphy arriving at this building in Dundalk, which is where we caught up with him. I wonder if you could explain to me why it is that you gave your mobile telephone and the mobile telephone of your foreman to Seamus Daly on the eve of the Omer bombing. I didn't give my phone to anybody. Despite the fact that the police on both sides of the Irish border know the identities of those they believe to have been the bombers, there is no immediate prospect of charges. The absence of prosecutions is an increasing burden for the families of the Omer bomb. Hello?
far as you're concerned, my name is Captain Fulton. You said you were in the IRA? Thirteen years. So, do you know any of these names? You're missing McCavitt. Mickey McCavitt. He's the one who organized it. He was the quartermaster. He looked after the weapons and all the explosives. He walked out in the IRA after Adams and McGinnis signed the Good Friday Agreement. He took Campbell and the others with him and set up the real IRA. They're not the Ra. They hit the IRA for selling out for Good Friday, giving up the armed struggle. So why did you ring me? I tell you, you're not asking the right question. But what is the right question? You don't get it, do you? They knew. They knew about the bomb. How? How did they know? Because I was working for them all along. The army, MI5, what you see. I told them myself I was a mole. I, I, I don't understand. I had a contact in the real IRA. He told me there was something big on. Something spectacular. So I met my RUC handler and I told him. Two days later, Oma. Surely, surely they would have done something. Why did they not try to stop it? Did you see any army checkpoints in Oma that day? Were there any soldiers on the street? Look, please, please. Look, we need help. It's very confusing, all this. I'd be careful with that vest. Accusations by former British spy Kevin Fulton that the intelligence community knew in advance about the OMA bombing have embarrassed the security services and raised questions about the failure to bring prosecutions, have been cause for the allegations to be investigated by the police ombudsman. Stanley, it's me. What's going on with the papers, Michael? I mean, if this is true. Well, they're going to have to answer some questions now. They can't ignore this. We should call a meeting. Okay, well, I'm still away in the south. I have a wee bit more to do. I'll see you later. Pleased to meet you. My name is John White. Mr. White. Well, I'll uh, leave you to talk for a while. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Ronnie. Cousin. Have you heard of the Gardies National Surveillance Unit? No, no, I haven't. Well, we're a secret department. We were uh, keeping tabs on the real IRA for the Irish government. I was working there when the bomb went off. I had a source in the real IRA, uh, a good one. He got them their cars, stole them, you know. Anyway, we knew that a car with a bomb was going to be driven to the border. Uh -huh. So what happened? I was told they were going to let it go. What? Deliberately? They said they were going to let it go. Why would they do that? Uh, protecting the informants. Maybe they thought a big bomb would discredit the real IRA, get them out of the picture, you know? 
Maybe they just didn't think it through. No one would get killed. Maybe they just fucked up. 30 years of chasing shadows, the machine gets lazy, you know? Look, Michael, I'm not saying lots of honest people, police didn't try their best. They did. But there won't be any prosecutions. Not for a moment. I know. There have to be. We have to keep the pressure on. Listen. Damn. If you ask me, they made a deal. They'll put the guns down, declare a ceasefire, and uh, we won't prosecute. <laughs> You're on the way of the peace process, Michael, and uh, nothing, nothing is going to allow to do that. What are you doing? It's the end of term. Oh, yeah, right. You knew I was coming home. I phoned you. Oh, yes, I did. Sorry. Where's Molly? She's upstairs. Uh, oh, she's better off sleeping. She won't get out of bed. She never goes out. She has these days, you know. Who looks after her? Sharon? Sharon. Sure. Yeah. Sharon comes over. Look, we're doing okay. Your mommy likes to be on her own, doesn't she? It's true. It's not true. She's too sad to get up. And you're just as bad. Who's looking after you? I'm all right. You look terrible. Really, I'm fine. You both look terrible. Have you all been to a meeting? You're always at a meeting. Every time I've rung, you're at a meeting. Or on TV. Please, stop arguing. What's the use of all this running around? I mean, do you really think they care what you're doing? Do you think they're going to stop the shooting and the bombing just because you gave an interview to the Belfast Telegraph or the BBC? Who are you doing it for? I'm doing it for Aidan. He's dead! He's dead! You should be here, Daddy! Looking after us! I can't believe that you. Flanagan better have some answers. Before this, you know we'll get some answers, hopefully. <laughs> Chief Constable, I see you now. grateful to have this opportunity to talk to you all today personally and to try to reassure you after some of the things that have been said. I know you'll be concerned about the Fulton case and so I wanted to brief you myself. Look, it's very difficult. The world of intelligence is murky. And trying to anticipate the intentions of a terrorist organization like the real IRA is difficult. We need good, reliable information. A good informer is worth his weight in gold, but a bad one is a disaster. And Captain Fulton was a bad one. He made things up for money trying to tell us what he thought we wanted to hear. So 
we cut him off. There was nothing else to do. But he said he knew. He warned you. He knew there was something big on. Well, I'm sorry, obviously, that he's been given the prominence in the media that he has, but I can assure you that there's nothing in this. Nothing. I've looked into it myself. Shouldn't there be an independent opinion on this? The police ombudsman, aren't they looking into it? Well, the ombudsman is there to deal with routine complaints, to give the communities a stake in policing after Good Friday. Yeah, but what is, what is the point of the ombudsman if, if it isn't looking into the things that we want investigated? What we're talking about is intelligence. MI5, special branch. It's not the proper area for the ombudsman. It's far too sensitive. Surely you understand that. Well, what about the guard of surveillance man in Dublin? He's telling the same stories. Well, obviously I can't speak for the Garda. And Detective Sergeant White is not one of my officers. I I think he was suspended. Wasn't he, George? Michael. Can I call you Michael? I understand the frustration that you all feel. That we all feel when something like this comes up. I just wish that you had come to me earlier with your concerns. I could have saved you the trouble. Michael, I know you want progress. So do I. We all do. But you're scaling down the investigation. And our adjustments are always reviewed as any investigation progresses. There's nothing abnormal in that. Do you seriously think that I would do anything to jeopardize the inquiry? You have to trust us. Otherwise, what else is there? Did Wade not tell you he was in trouble? I felt I could trust him. Well, we need to be more careful about who we trust. Yeah, we should have anyway, checked our facts. Anyway, who's Flanagan's telling us the whole story about the Lawrence. Lawrence. No, the chief constable's lying, is he? Is the chief constable, constable for God's sake? To so set up this organisation to help the police, not put them in a the dock. You tell me what he's done. If it's not true, then where's his answers? So what are you saying? That he's not doing his best? No! No, I don't think he is doing his best! He's trying to catch the man who killed our daughter. He's all we've got. Being told the whole truth. You're more stupid and naive than I thought. I won't be a part of this anymore. The company to support each other, not listen to this. Oh, you wait. Uh, I'm sorry, Michael. Don't. Don't! Don't you start. I'll not stand by and let them get away with it. And if I have to sue the RUC and the British government, I'll do it on my own. It's not working, is it? None of it. It's been a difficult day. I mean, the whole campaign. What have we achieved? Michael, we have achieved... No, I mean, Stanley, what have we actually achieved? We've started the civil action. We've started nothing. We just talked about starting it, that's all. No, Michael, come on, that's not true. I'm, I'm, I'm going to set up meetings in London next month. We need a million pounds, that's what we need. They're closing down the investigation. They're never going to catch them. Never. They're still shooting and bombing. They're still walking around the place, drinking in bars, having a good life, laughing at us. I mean, there's been over 2,000 unsolved murders since the beginning of the Troubles. Why should we be any different? I mean... Maybe they're right. Maybe us pursuing our campaign is destroying the peace process. Michael, you can't start thinking like that. Face it, Stanley, we're getting nowhere. We have supported each other. We've kept each other going. Is that not enough to be going on with? Not anymore, Stanley.
staying home now. I'd come back, try and work again, you know. We planned it all together, you know. Fifteen years, then he'd take over, he said. When I got too old to get out of a chair. No, it's okay, it's okay. He wasn't just my son, you know. He was my workmate. Everything. He was everything to me. And when I'm in the house, and the three of you are talking together, still doing all the things you've always done, and I tell myself it's unfair. I tell myself it's not true. Inside, I feel he meant more to me. And I know that's off. To feel like that. Because I know how much you loved him. I can't feel the way you feel. Only the way I feel. Uh, I think I'll just go down to the birches and see what's going on. The, uh, the ombudsman's given a report today. Yes, I know. Saw it in the paper. Well, it won't be long. Just think uh, I should show some solidarity, you know. All right. See you later. Okay.
It's done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming here this morning. My name is Sam Pollock. I'm the chief executive for the police ombudsman's office in Northern Ireland. I want to tell you what our investigation is about. I think you all know about the Sunday People article in which a man calling himself <coughs> Kevin Fulton claimed that he had told the police about Omar. We felt it essential to investigate these allegations, not least to show the people in Northern Ireland that we are serious about a new era in policing. I want to introduce you now to the police ombudsman, Nuala O'Long, who will take you further into the presentation. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. The Omer bomb was the most grave and exceptional crime in the history of Northern Ireland, and the failure to bring prosecutions shames us all. I want to start by saying that the people responsible for the Omar bombing are the terrorists who planned and executed the atrocities. <coughs> Nothing should ever detract from that unequivocal fact. We have established that Kevin Fulton did pass on information relating to the alleged dissident terrorist activity to his special branch handlers. The chief constable has said that Kevin Fulton's evidence was disregarded because it was unreliable. But I have to tell you that when we examined special branch records, we found no formal written record of Kevin Fulton being unreliable in the period up to August 1998. He is graded as a reliable source. I am satisfied that further action should have been taken on that information. It is clear that Special Branch did not pass it on to the Omer bomb investigation team. A large crowd gathered at the Silver Birch Hotel in Omer for the police ombudsman meeting the Omer family to discuss her long-awaited report. We'll bring you more news as soon as we have it. 93.1 FM and 792 medium wave. More worryingly, in the course of our review, it became clear to us that uh, special branch were also in receipt of other information, which indicated that an attack on Omer was imminent. Not least, an anonymous call on the 4th of August warned that an attack would be made on police in Omer on the 15th of August, 1998. <laughs> I have to tell you that these warnings were not followed up prior to the bombings. Now, significant evidential opportunities were most certainly lost when Special Branch did not share the intelligence with the senior investigator. In girls. Now, this is only one of a number of concerns we have about the conduct of the inquiry. We found 360 intelligence records which we say could have relevance to the Omer bombing. Of these documents, only 22% have been made available to the investigation team. The book logging all terrorist warnings at Omer disappeared without explanation. Whose fault was that? We don't have any satisfactory answer to that question. Two months into the investigation, the investigation team was reduced by 42%. Shame! Shame! It's not possible to say what impact action taken as a result might have had or whether this action would have prevented the Omer bomb. But it is little wonder that out of this uncertainty the doubt and mistrust and conspiracy arise. <clears throat> I have concluded with great sadness that the judgment and leadership of the chief constable has been seriously flawed. <laughs> the victims, you, the families, the people of Omar, as well as the officers of the RUC, have been let down by defective leadership, poor judgment, and a lack of urgency. 
<clears throat> and as a result, the chances of detaining and convicting the Omar bombers has been significantly reduced. <laughs> Disgrace. He should resign. Yes, he should resign. resign. That's the honor. Disgrace. Have we not suffered enough? He's gone far enough. It's a disgrace. We won't get any justice. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher. How did the family feel, Mr. Gallagher? Mr. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, you have everything to say to the Chief Constable. He's got to resign. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Skelton, can we ask you already to go down the line? I'm sorry, I have to get through. Just a few words, five minutes. Michael, please. Can I get through there, please? Mr. McCormick, Mr. Gallagher. Sparker, how did the family feel after the day? You can. Again, so they had to. Mr. Gallagher. I wanted to. And we lost our sister, Esther Wilson. We have fought this far, and to hear what we have just heard is completely Michael, devastating. I have to say something. Please. They're waiting for you. Mr. Brethren. Moss. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Okay. Mr. Wilson Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher, please. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher. <clears throat> Mrs. O'Lone is the first person to tell us the full story of the OMA investigation and why there have been no prosecutions. And we'd like to thank her for that. The day our loved ones lost their lives and our families were torn apart, we were told that everything would be done to bring their killers to justice. To learn today that they have failed us before the bomb, after the bomb, and are still failing us now. To have that knowledge, however distressing, however shocking, means that we can at last move forward. I would like to announce today that we will be pursuing our own legal action against the real IRA, against those who support and fund it, and those who are responsible for this dreadful atrocity. But more than that, we would like to call into account the security forces and the police and the politicians in London, Belfast and Dublin who have promised us so much but have so far singularly failed to deliver. We speak not just for ourselves. We speak for the victims of the troubles of whatever tradition. And all those victims of terror, wherever it happens. We will not go away. We will not be quiet. We will not be forgotten. I do not accept either the broad thrust or most of the detail of the Ombudsman's criticisms. And any impartial or objective assessment cannot fail to recognize the high quality of leadership that I have given to the OMA investigation. 